close-up lenses like the little Olaclip macro lens are absolutely fantastic for getting tiny little details in textures in bugs and little ants' heads. But if there aren't any bugs and ants to be found, then another great way to have fun with these little lenses is to actually freeze subjects and then photograph the results. And these can make fabulous prints for your home as well. Adorama TV presents iPhonography with Nikki Fitzgerald. Macro photography or close-up photography is absolutely wonderful for getting in close at those little details and textures that can't normally be seen with the human eye. Today, this is the first of our two Frozen specials and we're in the Upside Down House, courtesy of Dream Cottages, where we'll be discovering lots of natural textures and patterns in frozen fruit and these beautiful leaves here. And the ice that they're frozen in is gonna add a little bit of extra translucent magic to our images. So I've got myself a great position here just by the window where there's lots of natural light and I've got myself nice and comfortable. I've got a sturdy table. This is going to keep our photograph nice and focused, not much wobble. I've got my uh, gorilla pod here, which I'm going to put my camera in. That's going to keep my camera nice and steady. We don't want any blur, particularly with macro photography, which is really easy to get when you've got that macro lens on. Now we've got the Olaclip lens here. Now this comes as a four piece kit. We've got another macro lens, a 15 times. Um, and this is great for getting tiny little details like an ant's head or a little spider spider but we're going to use the 10 times because that's going to give more area a larger area in focus great for getting patterns and textures so to get to that lens we just need to reveal the uh, little 10 times by unscrewing the wide eye now it's really important that your lens is clean so I've got my microfiber cloth here really cheap about a pound and I'll just give that a little wipe and we can do the same with our iPhone camera as well because that's going to just make sure we get a really nice super sharp shot and then we're going to attach that to the iPhone camera simply clips on like that then we need to put the camera into the mount just clip that in avoid the shutter buttons on the bottom because then you'll start taking pictures automatically and we don't want that and that's all set up ready to go now I'm going to just turn the phone on. I'm going to swipe up to get the camera. Now I'm using the Apple camera. There's a very really good reason for that. And that's because it's got these little filters in this little icon here with the three colors. If you have a look at that, that's got um, a great filter called Chrome, which is fantastic for um, the strawberry color. So let's have a look at our strawberry. Uh, we've got it here and the frost is forming on the top and it's looking absolutely fantastic. I need to get that a bit higher for macro photography, you need to get your subject really close to the lens, about a half a centimetre away. So that's, that's a good, good height. So that's nice and close. And we just need to find the pattern there. Look at that pattern. That's absolutely brilliant. That looks gorgeous. So little pips are coming up and the frost is forming on the top. But it looks absolutely beautiful. Now I'm going to be using the timer button of this. I'm going to set it for three seconds. Now what this does, it means I don't have to touch the lens. If I touch the lens, the camera might wobble. We need a sharp picture. So I'm happy with that. I'll click on the button. Three, two, one. It's taken the picture. It looks absolutely fabulous. Save straight down to the camera roll. I'm really happy with the top of that. Now there's another great thing we can do and that's actually turn the strawberry upside down and this is going to reveal another lot of pattern. We'll just turn that out, remove the glass and then just stick that little stalk in there and that'll act as a nice support. Now that's beautiful. Now what's happened here is it's exposed for the other photograph so we probably just need to get that a little bit closer. I'm going to move my lens down a bit and there we can see some beautiful patterns, some shards of ice in there and that looks absolutely wonderful. It's got these little details of bubbles and that's really looking great with the texture of the strawberry. The combination of that red and the little pips and the bubbles and shards looks fabulous. So again, I'm going to take the picture. It's got a timer on it. Let's have a look at the filters here. We've got a lovely selection of filters. The chrome works beautifully, really brings out the bubbles in that strawberry and the textures and the color particularly. So I'm just going to click away. The camera will do the rest by itself. Leave that to take the picture. That looks fabulous. And this is what I love about macro photography. You never know what you're going to find in those little frozen blocks of ice. It's just a case of looking around, turning the strawberry around, seeing what you can find, seeing what you can discover. 
There really is some fantastic little worlds in there. It's just experimenting, having a look. Not only has it been great fun exploring these frozen worlds with our camera, we've now got some great photos on our album, which I think would look great on the walls with a little bit of apping from a snapseed and mixtures. So we're gonna open these up and see what we can do and just lift these pictures a bit to make some great prints for our home. And the first one I'm gonna open up is snapseed. I'm gonna find my little strawberry here, open him up and then press use and then bring him into snapseed. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to sharpen the center. Now, this is just gonna lift the image and create more interest for the eye when I bring out these little frozen frosty bits here. And I'm also gonna soften the edges and that's gonna create a great contrast between the outside and the inside of the image. So the first thing we need to click on is um, details. Now, this is the sharpening part of the process. I'm just going to slide up and you can see you get sharpening and structure. Now, if we slide to the right, this is lifting these little frost bits just here. It's quite subtle, but it does lift it slightly. And I've just chosen the option structure. I'm gonna slide my finger to the right again, and that's again, that's gonna lift that sharpening just subtly, but it's gonna add a little bit of punch to our picture. I'm gonna click on the tick to say yes. So that will save that effect. And the next thing I want to do, I'm gonna blur the outside, make the frame slightly whiter on the outside, and we're going to strengthen the color in the inside. And we're gonna do this by using the center focus option. Now we get a little blue dot in the middle. We can use the pinching motion to actually change this effect. You can see it's getting darker on that side. I'm just gonna open that up a little bit. And we've got three options here. We have blur strength, outer brightness, and inner brightness. We'll start with a blur strength. And if you swipe to the right, you'll get more of a blur on the outside. If we want